In this module, you will learn how to perform non-parametric regression using Gaussian process prior. This is a newly developed technique which is extremely useful for incorporating the nonlinear structure of the regression model under a non-parametric assumption. In this module, we'll talk about a new non-parametric prior called Gaussian process prior, which is very useful in non-parametric regression problem. So what is the Gaussian process prior? We'll go over through our learning objective in this module. So first we'll introduce what is the Gaussian process. Then we'll talk about function space view and some minor application. But again, the details of the applications uh, will be given in your lecture notes. So, what is the Gaussian process? The Gaussian process is an infinite dimensional generalization of the Gaussian distribution, that is, standard normal distribution is also known as Gaussian distribution. It can be used to set as prior over unknown function. In this module, we describe Gaussian process methods for regression problems. For more detail, see Rasmussen and Williams in their 2006 paper. There are several ways to interpret Gaussian process regression models. One can think of a Gaussian process as a defining a distribution over functions and inference taking place directly in the space of functions which is called the function space view. An alternate equivalent view is weight space view. So we'll now describe what is weight space view. We have a training data set called script D, which is uh, the vector xi, yi, i from one to n, where x denotes an input vector or covariates of dimension d. y denotes a scalar output or target which is the dependent variable. The column vector inputs for all n cases are aggregated in the d cross n design matrix x and the targets are collected in the vector y. So we can write script d as the vector x and y. The weight space view, the standard linear regression model with Gaussian noise is described as f of x is x transpose omega, where y is playing the role of f of x plus some error term epsilon. Where x is the input vector, omega is the vector of weights, parameters, that is parameters of the linear models. F is the function value and Y is the observed target value. Epsilon is distributed normal zero sigma one square. That's a part of our assumption. This noise assumption together with the model directly gives rise to the likelihood. The probability density of the observations given the parameters, which is factored over cases in the training set, because of the independent assumption, we can write down P of Y given X and omega uh, as normal with X transpose omega and sigma N square times identity matrix. For detailed calculation, you can see the notes. But the bottom line is y given x and omega, its conditional distribution will be normal with mean x transpose omega and variance sigma n square times i as the variance covariance matrix. In the Bayesian setup, we should specify a prior over the parameters before we look at the observation. We put a zero mean Gaussian prior 
with covariance matrix sigma sub p on the weights omega normal zero sigma sub p. The inference in the Bayesian linear model is based on the posterior distribution and which follows from the Bayes rule as the posterior is likelihood times prior divided by the marginal likelihood. The form of the posterior distribution as Gaussian with mean omega bar and covariance matrix A inverse and that is probability of W or omega given X and Y is normal with omega bar and A inverse where omega bar and A inverse can be expressed in closed form, form expression. In a non-Bayesian setting the negative log prior is sometimes thought as a penalty term and the maximum A posteriori or map estimate point is known as the penalized maximum likelihood estimate of the weights. The penalized maximum likelihood procedure is known in the case as ridge regression, Hoyle and Kenard 1970 paper. Because of ridge regression, the effect of the quadratic penalty term half omega transpose sigma p inverse omega from a log prior. To make predictions for a test case, we average over all possible parameter values weighted by the posterior probability. Therefore, the predictive distribution for f star, which is f of x star at x sub star is given by averaging the output of all possible linear models with respect to the Gaussian posterior. The expression you can find out, mathematical expression you can find out in your notes. So we'll talk about some fine points like projections of inputs from into feature space. A Bayesian linear model suffers from limited expressiveness. Simple idea to overcome this problem is to first project the inputs into some high dimensional space using a set of basis feature space functions and then apply the linear model in this space instead of directly on the inputs themselves. For example, a scalar input x could be projected into the space of powers of x like phi of x is 1, x, x squared, x cube and so on to implement polynomial regression. As long as the projections are fixed functions that is independent of the parameters w, the model is still linear in the parameters and therefore analytically tractable. Specifically we introduce the function phi of x which maps a d-dimensional input vector x into an n-dimensional feature space. Suppose script phi x be aggregation of column x for all cases in the training set. Now the model f of x equals to phi x transpose omega where the vector apparatus now has length n. The analysis for this model is analogous to the standard linear model except that everywhere phi x is distributed for x. Thus the predictive distribution becomes quite simple. One can write f star given x star x y as normal with some mean and the variance. The expressions you can find out from your notes. To make predictions using this equation, we need to invert the matrix of size n cross n, which may not be convenient if n, the dimension of the feature space, is large. We can rewrite in this situation the predictive distribution is normal with mean and some variance. Again, the expressions can be obtained from your notes. In equation 
the feature space always enters in the form of a quadratic form, like phi star transpose sigma p phi, and so on. The entries of these matrices are invariably of the form phi x transpose sigma p phi x prime, and which are very, very useful expression. So in that context, we can define a covariance function or kernel function, which is K stands for kernel x x prime as phi x transpose sigma p phi x prime. Notice that phi x transpose sigma p phi x prime is an inner product with respect to sigma. As sigma p is positive definite, we can define psi x as sigma p to the power half phi x. We obtain a simple dot product expression. So that is k x x prime is the product of psi of x and psi of x prime. If an algorithm is defined solely in terms of inner products in input space, then it can be lifted into feature space by replacing occurrence of those inner products k x x sub zero. This is sometimes called the Carnell trick. Now we'll talk about the function space view. A Gaussian process is the collection of random variables, any finite number of which have a joint Gaussian distribution. A Gaussian process is completely specified by its mean function and covariance and variance function. We define the mean function m of, m of x and covariance function k of x x prime of real process f of x as m of x is the expected value of f of x and k x x prime is expected value of f of x minus m of x times f of x prime minus m of x prime and we'll write the Gaussian process as f of x distributed as GP. GP stands for Gaussian process with parameters m of x and the kernel function k x x prime. The random variables represent the value of the function f x at location x. A Gaussian process is defined as a collection of random variables. The definition automatically implies a consistency requirement, which is also sometimes known as marginalization property. The marginalization property simply means that if the GP, for example, y1, y2 normal mu sigma, then it must also specify y1 is normal mu1, sigma1, one, one, where sigma1, one, one is the relevant submatrix of sigma. A simple example of Gaussian process can be obtained from our Bayesian linear regression model where f of x will be phi x prime omega with prior omega belong uh, with omega prior belongs to normal family that is zero mean and sigma p. We have for the mean and covariance then expected value of fx will be zero because the expected value of omega is zero and expected value of fx fx prime will be phi x prime sigma p phi x, a nice quadratic form. Again, details you can find out from your lecture notes. In this module, we consider the squared exponential covariance function. A list of covariance function is presented later. The covariance function specifies the covariance pairs of random variables, which is covariance of f of xp and f of xq will be simply a kernel function xp and xq, which is exponential minus half of xp minus xq squared. Note that the covariance between the output is written as the function of the inputs. For squared error covariance function, we see that the covariance is almost unity between variables whose corresponding inputs are very close. 
and decreases as their distance in the input space increases. It can be shown that the squared exponential covariance function corresponds to a Bayesian linear regression model with an infinite number of basis functions. For every positive definite covariance matrix k dot dot, there exists a possibly infinite expansion in terms of basis function known as Marshall's theorem. We generate a random Gaussian vector with this covariance matrix f star is normal zero with the cardinal function x star x star. And there are schematic diagram provided in the lecture notes. So please consult with that. Okay. So for squared error covariance function we see that the covariance is almost unity between variables whose corresponding inputs are very close and decreases as their distance in the input space increases. It can be shown that the squared exponential covariance function corresponds to a Bayesian linear regression model with an infinite number of basis functions. For every positive definite covariance function k dot dot, there exists a possibly infinite expansion in terms of basis function known as Marshall's theorem. In this scenario, uh, the graph, the four functions drawn at random from a GP prior, Notice that informally the functions look smooth. Again, refer to the diagram given in the notes. Squared exponential covariance function is infinitely differentiable. The characteristic length scale is around one unit. More realistic modeling situations that we do not have access to function values themselves, but only noisy versions is y equals f of x plus epsilon. Assuming additive independent identically distributed Gaussian noise epsilon with variance sigma sub n square The prior on the noisy observation becomes a covariance expression, yp and yq, and covariance of y, where delta pq is the Kronecker delta. Again, the expression is given in detail in the notes. So in the function space point of view, we write down the joint distribution of the observed target values and the function values as a multivariate normal with mean vector zero and covariance matrix consists of the cardinal functions. The detailed expressions are given in the lecture notes. And finally, we can get the predictive equations for Gaussian process regression. Now, what happens if we vary the hyperparameters? The covariance functions that we use will have some free parameters. For example, the squared exponential covariance function in one dimension has a form which involves certain parameters. So we can vary the parameter and then, for example, we observe the length L the signal variance and noise variance can be varied. In general, we call the free parameters as hyperparameters. And one can now estimate the hyperparameters by different methods. One is the marginal likelihood, which is an integral of the likelihood times the prior. The term marginal likelihood refers to the marginalization over the function values f. 
Yeah, under the Gaussian process model, the prior is Gaussian, and therefore y given f is normal, and one can write down the log likelihood function, a simple expression involving quadratic forms and a constant term. This result can also be obtained directly by observing that y is normal with mean zero and covariance matrix k sub theta plus sigma n squared times identity. And using those expressions, and again the details are all given in the lecture notes, one can assume suitable hyper prior on theta and sigma n square as p theta times p sigma n square. And then the log posterior distribution can be expressed proportional to sum of three log terms. And the posterior mode is obtained very easily then, which is ex expressed as theta hat or map estimate is the org max of log of p theta sigma n squared given y and x. And estimate of the variance will be sigma n hat square is arg max of log of p theta sigma n square given y over x. Where in the first expression, the maximization is over theta, and in the second posterior mode, the maximization is over sigma n square, which will be a positive real line. And one can also write down the different estimated curve and their credible intervals or bands. So in this module, you have learned about Gaussian process, its properties, and how it's very useful for development of the non-parametric regression method.